Hi, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Backyard Flight Test, we're going to take a quick look at how various modifications affect cruise speeds, in particular on this uh, Skywagon. I've got this triangle with 15 nautical mile legs scoped out not far from my house. The cool thing about this is that this flight path is that if you fly it and record things like pressure altitude, temperature, ground speed, uh, your ground track, your indicated airspeed, uh, then you can determine what your corrected true airspeed and the accumulated instrument errors are, uh, irrespective of uh, winds and all the rest of that. You have to throw all of this into a fairly complicated equation, and fortunately I have just such a thing put together by a math geek. <laughs> of course, there are errors in all of these things, so the caveat is the results are approximate. You may not realize it, but in science, all results are approximate, just dependent on the accuracy of your measurement tools. If the errors are pretty much the same from sample to sample, then the results are relevant. The numbers I am using are taken from tools readily available to us in the cockpit every day. So we're just going to live with the errors, thanks. What you're going to see is a graph of various speed runs in different configurations. Each run reflected a configuration change of some sort. The first two runs formed the baseline. It's a 1958 Cessna Skywagon sporting an 0470R engine of 230 horsepower with a seaplane prop and a sportsman cuff. Otherwise, it's pretty much stock. The second two runs were done with a new two-blade MT prop replacing the two-blade seaplane prop. The final runs were done with the wing X extensions added to the wings, the last of which had a brand new P-Ponk engine installed, adding a nominal 45 horsepower. So a fairly significant horsepower bump. I'm hoping the results will, real, will reveal the impact of the modifications on cruise performance. All right, enough of that boring stand-up stuff. Too much talking. Let's go fly. Power to take off. We're heading north. Man, what a pretty day here. It's late in the afternoon. It's been blowing like crazy earlier. It's really nice now. We'll climb out and head for the track and lay down some numbers. All right. Hey, wait a minute. I just got a call from Nora. Seems that there's an unidentified object uh, in our airspace, and they want me to go and investigate this UFO. So let's go see what it is. Let me turn here and see where it is. There's something out there. Wait a minute. That's kind of like a saucer now. Oh, it's not a saucer. Really. But it, it looks like two wings. There's two wings on that thing. That's no fun. It's a saucer. Has it got his ADS-B on or something? It's a Stearman. That's what it is. It's, uh, it's my buddy Stearman. He lives in the neighborhood with me. Yeah, no big deal. Well, mission accomplished. We'll tell more Ed, but everything's fine. Let's go to the tracks and lay down some numbers. Here we go. All right, here we are. Okay. Geez, this is kind of boring flying around here on autopilot, but... Uh, all right, <clears throat> enough of that stuff. Let's go see what the results are. The new prop wing X extensions, and the more powerful engine being the three main configuration changes. The first one was done before restoration program began on the airplane, and the second reflected a 180-pound 180 180 weight loss from that original configuration. The difference between the two runs showed a true airspeed, true airspeed close to identical, <laughs> virtually no difference. The next two runs saw the addition of the MT prop, and it was the single biggest improvement in true airspeed overall resulting in a 15 mile per hour improvement. Adding wing extensions uh, did virtually nothing for cruise speed, nor did the more powerful engine. And I find that interesting that the prop had such an impact on, a, on performance. After all, two blades a two blade, right? Well, actually, there's a lot of difference between airfoils with respected props, uh, given the 20 or 30 years between the design times. I also find it fascinating that the power setting and fuel burn determines power output not engine displacement. I think that's significant to point out. Somehow, uh, or somewhere there out there is an equation that finds all that, but frankly, it's a bit much uh, math for me at the moment, so we'll leave it at be. I expected the real impact of weight loss and additional engine power to be in the takeoff performance, and I think that's what these numbers show. I'm going to cover that topic later, so I won't discuss it now. I suspect that the wing X extensions would show an improved true airspeed at higher altitudes, but to be honest, I never set a baseline for that, and I didn't think about it, so I'm not going to speculate. I just thought that this was uh, cool and wanted to share it with y'all. 
I've got two more runs to do with this airplane when I finally get around to adding VGs to the wing and then again when I put big tires on it. After all, it wouldn't be a Skywagon without big tires, right? You love big tires. So if you like the video, please subscribe so you won't miss the next one. Thanks for watching and see you next time on Flyover.